Hello everyone, it's Patty here. Thank you so much for joining me today on this first day of our 10th birthday celebration. You know, I'm so glad you're here because this is an important day for us at Team Sparkle. And just saying that word Team Sparkle, I tell you, that has a whole lot of meaning for us around here. I was just like you. I started as an art volunteer. I turned into an art teacher, the best job in the world, and now I'm an entrepreneur and I help. Team Sparkle helps teachers all over the world with really creative lesson planning. And that's what we're gonna celebrate this week. We're celebrating you, your art journey, and hopefully through these videos, we can kind of inspire you, offer you some great tips and resources, and maybe teach you some new things if you've been teaching for a long time or if you're an experienced art teacher. So today we're gonna to talk all about how to begin teaching art. And I'm gonna share the story of how I began. You may have wondered how I got started as an art teacher. You may wonder, you know, where do I have my master's degree? Or, you know, what school I went to or how long I took to train as an art teacher. With no disrespect to all of the people who did all of the above, I didn't do any of it. And I think the opportunities that came my way were the result of following the path that was right for me. I started teaching by way of being a volunteer. So my first tip is to say yes to opportunities. Now here I was, I had three kids and my youngest one uh, was you know, two or three years old and I became PTA president of the school. <laughs> I, it was a Title I school. There weren't a whole lot of parent volunteers but the parent volunteers who did work at this school, um, they were full-time uh, blue collar workers. They, they were busy and but they committed themselves to working for the school and I when I went to this school for the first time it wasn't you know my dream school they didn't have the programs that I wanted they certainly didn't have art music science anything like that it was like a basic school it wasn't pretty it kind of looked like a penitentiary and in California that's sometimes how some of the schools look I wasn't thrilled about being there and in fact and this is the sad part I petitioned for my kids to move to a neighboring school where I thought it'd be a better opportunity for my kids. Um, my petition was denied and so I was stuck at my neighborhood school. And within about, I don't know, a day, I decided, okay, I'm not going to bemoan the fact that I'm at the less desirable school. Even though it's my neighborhood school, I'm gonna make the most of it. So I did. I signed up and volunteered to be the PTA president I didn't have to be voted in and there was no one else who wanted the job <laughs> and I took it upon myself to do what I can for the kids at the school not so much my own kids but what could I do what could I do that would be some of my talents how could I impact the school in a positive way but I stepped into this role just saying to myself it's better than not doing anything uh, I may not be liked for all my decisions I may not have the best uh, choices of programs to adopt, but at least it's a step forward. So my advice to you is take advantage of opportunities when they come to you. I could have said, uh, I don't want to be here. I'm sending my kids to private school, which, you know, be fine. But I was at that school and I just took it upon myself to say yes to that opportunity. So here's what happened. Um, it was the most amazing school. I was so happy during my years as a parent, as a volunteer, I worked in every single capacity that there possibly could have, other than treasurer. That was like a no, I was not doing that. <laughs> you couldn't, couldn't put that upon me. But I did take, a, um, I did do as many volunteer opportunities as I, as I could. And one of them just happened to be district advisory committee. That was, it really was the most boring opportunity. But I said yes to it because, you know, People, they needed someone to do it. All it involved was meeting with the superintendent and the district superintendents and the principals and one parent volunteer from each school once a month. So you would rotate the, to the different schools. And you would talk about programs, what the parents thought, what the administrators uh, were doing. And, um, so it was kind of like a dry meeting. But you know what? It was a blast. I got to meet all the principals. 
I got to meet the superintendent. I got to see inside how schools work. I got to be aware, I was made aware of how important parents are, how much principals and administrators and superintendents listen to parents. They may not always act on it because there's a lot of things that go on uh, when you're running a school, but they listened. And I, I got to know a lot of these amazing educators um, through meetings. So when I decided that I no longer wanted to be a volunteer anymore, when my youngest, my daughter Elliot, went into kindergarten, I said, I think I'm kind of ready to get paid. <laughs> we, we were a young family, you know, we're living in Santa Barbara. It wasn't cheap. We, you know, Neil was working really hard, biking to work, you know, so I could have the car, all of that stuff. Like we, you know, had to work. So I wanted to make some money. And literally, as soon as I said, as soon as my brain said, okay, I'm not going to volunteer anymore. I'm going to teach I, or no. I'm going to get a job, then I tell you, the powers that be just kind of went to work. And within about a week, a friend of mine says, you know, Patty, we were at a barbecue. It was like in August. And, and I said to her, I, I want to work. And she goes, I heard that you did. There's a job at our school. Look, they're looking for an art teacher. This is what I thought. Oh, that, <laughs> that's great, but I'm not a teacher. And she goes, but you're an artist. And I'm like, well, I'm not really an artist either. I mean, I, I kind of do a little few illustrations, but I'm not really an artist. I'm not really a teacher. It's not really the right job for me. She goes, go in, talk to the guy. Just, just see what it's about. So I actually went home that night and I said, well, you know, I've been volunteering, teaching art in the classroom for three years. I've been helping the teachers out. I, I have taught lessons in the art room. I, I do love kids. I do love art. I love kids. I love books. It, maybe it's a perfect fit. So I applied for the job. And a week later, I'm sitting in this room with the principal of the school, who I knew from the district advisory committee. So we were kind of buddies. Not really, but I thought so. And five other teachers. I was so scared. I was so scared. I've never been that scared. I don't really get scared. I thought, I just, I didn't think I belonged there. Here were these educated teachers, super smart, amazing, accomplished, taught our kids. And I'm, I had the audacity to apply for a job there. It just seemed like to be a, not a good fit. Like I just couldn't see how they would like me. But you know what? I, I prepared for that, for that interview and I, I showed them what I did in the classroom and as a volunteer. None of them were that impressed. But the principal, he knew me because I took that opportunity, that chance to work as a district advisory committee volunteer. Who does that? And I knew him. He liked me. He knew that I could run a meeting. And that's what he said. He goes, well, Patty, I know you can run a meeting because I was the district advisory chair. <laughs> and, and he goes, so can you run a classroom? And I'm like, well, I, I think so. I mean, my volunteering, they, you know, works out pretty good. He goes, well, come in next week and do a, teach a class to the sixth graders. And I remember the sixth grade class like it was just yesterday, but I think the other class was first grade. And we'll see how you do. Oh my gosh. I was like, great. That sounds fantastic. So I did it. I, I researched. Oh my gosh, I didn't know how to teach art to kids. I didn't know. I had no curriculum. He didn't say, here's the lesson plan. He said, come in and we'll, we'll observe you. So, and then if we like you, we'll give you the job. It was, it was a bit scary, uh, but I did my homework and I had some experience with art and I have some experience with teaching, but I have a lot of experience planning and I knew that I had a lot of creativity and I could come up with something that the kids would like. And I came up with a couple of eh, lessons, <laughs> just kind of boring lessons. They weren't anything to write home about, but you know what? I delivered the lessons. I was a little nervous. Uh, you know, when you get up speaking in front of someone, and your voice kind of shakes a little bit and my hands were kind of shaking. 
But you know what? The kids didn't seem to notice, and they were certainly polite enough. They didn't do anything because their teacher was there, and they probably got the drill. You're getting a free lesson today, so you be good. <laughs> we're going to test this, this girl out and see if she can be your art teacher. But you know what? I, after about 15 minutes, I kind of settled down, and, and the kids themselves gave me energy. And they, they kind of reacted to what I was teaching them. And what comes naturally to me is illustration and drawing. And so when I would be drawing a couple of things, they would, you know, light up a little bit like, oh, teach us that. And I'm like, oh, well, sure, I can do that. That's easy. You know, I don't know how to, you know, do it in a elements of art sequence, but I can, I can show you. And they gave me the energy. So here's my, my tip for you. The insight that I had was you just never know the opportunities that are going to come your way. I stayed at that school. I volunteered at that school. I said yes to some volunteer activities that I wouldn't normally do. And it all led me to where I am now. It was all one little stepping stone. And it wasn't a smooth road. There was a lot of things that I didn't do well. A lot of things I wish I could do over again. But it's all a path and you can do the same. So say yes to opportunities because you just never know where they're going to lead you. Okay, so that was number one. <laughs> if you're a little worried that this is going to be a super long video, don't be. I'll make the other ones go a little bit quicker. But the starting is the most important. It shows that it's possible to do anything that you want to do, even though you may not know what that end result is going to be. You just don't know. Okay, so number two. I have it listed right here. It's all about addressing concerns fairly with the student's interest in mind. So let me break that one down. I remember the day, my first year teaching at that school where I was hired, yay, <laughs> and the teacher or the PTA president came up to me and said, Patty, I was teaching in a mobile with, a, with the science teacher. So we were splitting this mobile. It was a great big mobile. So it was lovely. It wasn't, well, not too big. Um, but we had it like science in one part, the art in the other part. She came in to me and she goes, we've always done the book fair in this mobile. So you and the science teacher need to combine all of your stuff so that we can host the book fair on the other half of this room. And <laughs> I looked at her and I'm like, oh, great how did they do it like last year like what happened how what, where do you put the kids <laughs> she goes well we all kind of sc scooted over here and all of the have you been to a book fair there's like shelves and shelves of books like the scholastic book fairs there's a lot of books and a lot of people a lot of cash registers and i i kind of kept an open mind i'm like well if you've done it last year then surely i can you know accommodate you since it worked out so well last year so I'll, I'll work with the science teacher. We'll move a few things around and, and I'll try to make it work. Oh my gosh. So we were in, I thought the mobile was big. It seemed big when you were just teaching art. But when you put a book fair in your art room, <laughs> all of a sudden you kind of cut down a little bit in size. So it didn't work out at all. The kids were my 30 sixth graders all day long. It happened to be on the, the upper grade day when it, they're not little kids in small classes, they're big kids in large classes, large number of classes. And they were all kind of squished together, like all working like in a table <laughs> together. And I looked at my, my, the teacher, the homeroom teacher, and I said, this isn't going to work. I'm not doing this again. She goes, well, it's the way it's always been. You're just going to have to get used to it. And I'm like, no, um, it's not serving the students. This is not advantageous for them. So here's the thing, you're going to come into or situations that are not good for you or the students. And here's what you need to know. When you want to make a change, it cannot come from the viewpoint that it'll change how you teach or it will benefit you at all. It must always come through how it will benefit or change or impact the students. Do you know who taught me that? A principal at one of the schools that I worked at. She says, if you want to change something, you can't fight for how this will affect you. You have to fight for how it will affect the children. So I told the PTA president that 
there will no longer be a book fair <laughs> in the art room for the following year or any other year as long as the art is in that room. And uh, they go, well, you know, we don't have any other opportunities. I'm like, no. The children, uh, you fought so hard for the children to have an art teacher. You hired, you looked at a lot of teachers to hire for these children to have an art teacher. You've raised so many funds for these children to have an art teacher and an art program. They have an art program now. You've worked so hard to create this. Don't uh, uh, take away that opportunity for the children to have a really solid art lesson on the days that you have the book fair. It never happened again. They, they bought into it because it was true. The children, although they were a lot more accommodating <laughs> than me, uh, it wasn't to their benefit. So hopefully that tip helps. Okay, number three. I get this a lot from, uh, we have an amazing community in the Sparklers membership. And through Facebook, we often ask each other questions. And I put this one as number three because I, I hear it a lot, especially with new teachers or you're going into a new school. And it's all about um, being, feeling like you're being attacked for your viewpoint on teaching art or having to defend what style of art you're teaching or defending something about your program. Maybe someone thinks it's too crafty or maybe someone thinks it's too uh, not project-based enough. Whatever it is, someone's going to complain about it. You can, that's a guarantee. So number three is respond to criticism or questions as an opportunity to share your vision. Mm, this is When you first come into art, first teaching art, like I didn't know what my vision was. My vision was to get hired. <laughs> I didn't have a vision. I just wanted to do the best I can. I wanted the kids to have an art program. I worked so hard just to find some kind of lessons, which there really, there were no blogs back then, people. Um, just to come up with some fun, engaging lessons. I didn't worry about the elements of art uh, at first or anything like that. For me, I just wanted the kids to be engaged and like me, like coming to art class. Um, but when people are challenging you about what style of art you're teaching or the teaching methods in which you uh, teach art with, you have to look at it not as an attack on you. Always take that opportunity. I mean, always take this opportunity as a chance to explain your vision, like what you have in your mind, like what you want to have happen, what, how you see the art program enhancing these children's lives, how you see the process-based art program that you have, how it'll, you know, integrate well with thinking and whatever it is, like whatever you're passionate about, whatever your vision is, don't forget to take that opportunity to, to share it with people. People don't care what it is that you teach as long as you can be excited about it, defend it, and show, prove to them how beneficial it is. Now you might say, that just doesn't fit into someone complaining to me or getting mad at me about some you know, project being too project-based and parents being disappointed with their art projects. Um, there always are, there's always room for improvement and you can always take criticism and go, you know what, you're right, I, I could do better. That is a, a really good thing to do, uh, especially if you kind of know in the back of your mind that, yeah, you know, they're kind of right. That's when it hurts the most, by the way, when someone who's kind of bringing up a pain point of yours and you're identifying with it and that's when it really, really hurts because you kind of know better. But, you know, once you start to get into the flow of teaching art, you start to realize, well, what, what do you want your program to look like? And oftentimes parents, especially parents, they have a preconceived idea of what art, an art program should be like. And you can't possibly appeal to everyone's sensibilities. And you don't really know what everyone's you know, idea of an art program could be like. And it doesn't mean that it's the right way. Just because they're parents and just because they have an idea of what they did as a kid and, and if that's the right way, doesn't mean that you have to do it that way. But it does give you the opportunity to go, oh, that was, I remember doing that when I was young. I remember, you know, having whatever, you know, give, give them an example. 
but we're going to be doing it this way. The children are all working together collaboratively on a project and although you might not see any results yet, you might not see them for six weeks, wait till it all comes together. You will be amazed. You know, you can just set parents, administrators up for what your intentions are. Just never, never lose that opportunity to share your vision and your vision will grow. And if you don't have a vision right off the bat, I certainly didn't, just kind of hold on. <laughs> just take the feedback and go, okay, I'm writing it down and just keep on adding it to your like, well, allow it to shape where you want to go. Okay, this is a big one. Don't worry about what you don't have. Appreciate what you do. Now, now I know it kind of sounds churchy and you're always like, yeah, but that kind of a statement always gets followed by a year, but. Um, but here's the thing, there's always someone in a worse situation than you. And honestly, I remember my first year's teaching, I got a schedule back from a principal and I couldn't believe it, but they put a kindergarten class back to back with a sixth grade class with 10 minutes in between. 10 minutes! <laughs> How could I possibly transition? Okay, so the kindergarten class was an hour long, and so was the uh, sixth grade class. Yeah, poor me, right? When you're new to something, when something is presented to you, and it's new, or if it's a change, if it's a grade level, if it's, if it's, if it's five minutes, if it's anything silly, I mean anything, if it's a change, it's bad. That's how your brain processes things. That's how most people's brain processes things. Any kind of change equals bad. You don't even give it a chance. I never, you, don't, you have to allow it to sink in and go, okay, what can I do with this? We're art teachers and that means we're creative thinkers. So I'm like, well, I have a, an hour for kindergarten. I, I surely, no one needs an hour for a kindergarten art class, no one. <laughs> 45 minute tops. So that's what I did. I cut the class short to 45 minutes and then I had 15 minutes to clean up. Easy peasy. Now there are some issues with, you know, teaching time and all of that. So just kind of work out the details. And that is an extreme case because there was really no problem there. When in the Sparklers Club, I'll never forget a lady, I think it was on a webinar. I'm like, okay, you know, what's your schedule like and how many kids you teach? She goes, oh yeah, like I teach at three schools and I have teach eight classes a day and I don't have any time in between, and oh, they're all 30 minutes long. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's harsh. You know, that's a pretty harsh uh, schedule. So I don't, she didn't seem to be complaining, that's all I can say. She seemed to be taking it in stride. So try to really be grateful for the opportunity, for the schedule, for whatever you do have, because there always is someone in a worse situation. I hear this a lot with supplies. I can't do that arts project because I don't have that supply. Well, you know, you in the world, not everyone has the exact same art supplies. The point is, are the concepts behind the art supplies, uh, what they can do. And so you might find something that works just as well. Or you might find an alternative uh, art supply that you do have in abundance that can work just as well. It's all about creativity and letting the creative juices flow. Number five. Don't be too great at those extra projects or the extracurriculars that you get asked to do. Don't let your, you know, creative bug shine. So here's what I mean. Do you get asked to do the um, backdrop for the school musical or the posters for the cookie sale? If you do, dial it back, people. It's like asking your teenage sons to do the dishes and they do a really good job, like so amazing, they do it better than you. So of course you're gonna ask them to do it every night. Do they do, a, that's, that's like never gonna happen. They will always do a bad job because these boys are smart. They don't wanna be asked again. <laughs> so it kind of sounds a little manipulative, but unless you wanna be doing these types of activities for the rest of your life, you know, just do an amazing job. Just do a bang up job and you'll get asked all the time. Um, if you don't want to do it, don't do a bang up job. Or better yet, the most ideal situation possible, always say yes and have the kindergartners do it or have the third grade class do it. 
when you can, you don't have to be doing this. You're not being paid as a graphic designer. This is not your job. Your job is an art teacher. You're teaching children to be creative. So you want to um, engage the kids. You want to um, put put as much uh, ownership on the projects for the kids after school clubs, lunch hour clubs, get them to do the work. I remember being asked to do a, a mural for the school play and God bless the music teacher's heart. Holy moly, he went to town. This was like an amazing, it was Mulan. The, the school had never done a musical before. This is a, the title one school that had nothing 10 years ago. And all of a sudden it had a musical director wanting to do a play. The school was going crazy. Well, like, this was amazing. And I was there teaching art. He's like, let's work together and you can do this fabulous backdrops. And, and I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> No, 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 no. I don't really want to do that. But the kids will be thrilled. And and I said, look, I, I won't, but the kids will, and I'll supervise it. I'll provide all the paints. And he was thrilled with that. He didn't love them too much. He goes, well, you know, they could have been a little better. And it's true. He just did a fabulous job. And, you know, the kids, but the kids knew that. They're like, oh, we should have made it longer, or it didn't cover this area. So they're thinking about how they could have made it better. Does it help the kids if I did it all? No, you have to let the children do it. And there's always kids in the school who, who are gonna to wanna to do that. My final tip is perhaps the most important one. You know, when we're our teachers, we tend to think of ourselves as being the teacher all the time. But as our teachers, we are creative beings. So here's my sixth tip. Your students are creative individuals and so are you. So take time to nourish your creative soul. This point was spoken so uh, prominently to me uh, during my last summer's workshop in Santa Barbara. Um, about 75 of my sparklers, people in my membership, came for a, a kind of like a bonus event and in the morning before the workshop started for the general uh, admissions. And there's a group of ladies who have been connecting through the Facebook community for, you know, a year almost. And they got together at the Sparkler meetup. And here's what they did. They decided that they would start a, an artist trading card group amongst themselves. And when they, uh, after they got back from the workshop, they took the time in the summer when we have kind of the most time as, you know, our teachers to create these beautiful cards and I have to say, uh, I was just so warmed because they created extra cards for me as well. And they're all signed by the people in the Sparklers Club. So here's one from Ashley, Ashley Bruce. And here's one from Natalie Meza and um, Lexi Conrad. Look at this one. She's from France, so look at this. And they sent them to me, and I realized that what these ladies were doing is they were nurturing their creative soul. These are the things that you need to do as an artist because boy, if you are constantly in the grind of planning your curriculum, you know, thinking up lesson plans, uh, going to meetings, uh, working on classroom management skills, which is kind of essential, these can drain your creative soul. And your creative soul will fuel all of the above points that I talked about in this video. It will help you look for opportunities. It will make more, you more aware of what your path should be, look, should be like. It will help you look at your children and your students in a way that is more removed from the daily grind. You kind of see the overall picture. Nurturing your creative soul is the ultimate responsibility for you as an art teacher. So don't give it up. Don't put it aside. It's kind of like you doing your yoga or your Pilates or going for your run. It's kind of like an essential part of your whole balanced approach to teaching. So I hope these tips really kind of inspire you. Maybe there's one that resonates with you right now. This is the one that you needed to hear to give yourself permission to go out into the world and actually, you know, do an hour of painting for yourself or say yes to that opportunity that has spoken to you, but everyone else was saying, oh, don't bother. But maybe there's something about it that's, that speaks to you. 
or maybe it's a way that you can go into your classroom and look at children with like a fresh set of eyes. I want to leave you with one bonus tip. This bonus tip is for me, it may not resonate with you, but this is what kept me going for 13 years when I was a teacher and actually especially when I was a volunteer. Every child that walks into your art room or your classroom or your studio or your home is someone else's baby. I'm going to say that again. Every child that walks into your art room is someone else's baby. So if you are a mother and you have a child and you're sending that child off to school, your hope and your dream and your deepest, most, you know, protected wish is that everyone will love your child. <laughs> Isn't that true? I mean, our child may not be the most lovable at times. <laughs> and that teacher, they get to you know be with your child all day long. If you're the art teacher, you get to see that child for maybe 30 minutes or maybe 40 minutes. Treat that child as if it was your baby. And don't take on the mothering role for everyone. That's not what I mean but respect the child as if you would want your child to be respected by another teacher. I hope that resonates with you. So now let's talk about what's happening on the website today and on the Deep Space Sparkle Facebook page. This is the party planner and if you haven't gotten this one, you can download it right next to this video. And it's gonna give you a kind of a heads up on what's happening every day. Now today, it's day one and day one is all orange. <laughs> yes, I like to color code everything. So what we have on sale today is a brand new art teacher's toolkit. And this toolkit is pretty darn amazing. It will basically give that brand new teacher, someone who's just walking into a classroom for the very first time, or a studio or even a home uh, based environment, seven lessons from K through sixth grade that are kind of interchangeable. You can kind of scale them up and scale them down so they have a lot of dual purposes. I also have five different resources in this Our Teacher Toolkit that will help you deal with management, planning your curriculum, knowing what art supplies to order, and seven posters that will give you an overview of what children can learn throughout the year with you. This is a really awesome toolkit and it's on sale for $19. Regular price is $39. If you're brand new to teaching art or just need to kind of brush up on your skills, our most popular class, Teaching Art 101, is also on sale. It's regularly $129 and today for this week, you can get it for $49. It's a total steal. It's never been that price before in the history of this class. And so take advantage of it for this week only until Tuesday. Tuesday's your last day. And make sure that you download today's freebie because today's freebie is a lesson that I've had on my blog for a while, but we've updated it, included drawing handouts and standards so that you can download the entire lesson. It's called Easy Winter Landscapes and it's just perfect for that project that you need to do this holiday season or even into the winter months. Once you download this freebie, you are automatically entered to win one of three Teaching Art 101 prizes. Yes, you can win uh, a registration for the full Teaching Art 101 class. All you have to do is download the freebie. It's that simple. So now it's time to go head off to the Facebook page and share what you like about Deep Space Sparkle. Share what your experiences have been as a brand new art teacher. Maybe you have a good piece of advice that you can offer that new teacher, someone who's starting a studio for the first time. I would love to hear from you. So head on over to the Deep Space Sparkle Facebook page. You'll be able to see all of the links from today's um, prizes and the flash sales and the freebies and also on Deep Space Sparkle. Thanks for joining me today.